Good morning, good morning, good morning. G O O D M O R N I N G. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? It is Monday, a brand new week. I am so excited that I have had the opportunity for the past couple months to share ideas and strategies and tips with you all. And today, as we wrap up this last Live Math Monday session, I just wanted to give you five tips to carry with you throughout the summer and as we move into whatever our academic year is going to look like in the fall, okay? So as it relates to math, tip number one, use what you have, right? You've seen the live lessons where I've used utensils, plates, cups, um, remote controls, coins, shoes, whatever you have, whatever you have that you can grab a hold to and count and use for math, grab those tools. Don't, don't feel like it has to be fancy or store bought, whatever you have to use, use those things in order to practice the different math skills and strategies that we've talked about. Okay. So tip number one, use what you have. Tip number two, highlight numbers everywhere. If you're at the gas station, the supermarket, um, driving down the street, it doesn't really matter, right? Highlight those numbers everywhere you go so that they see them, so that they recognize them. Because a lot of times, especially our younger, our younger children, they get confused. If they see a four and it's written a different way that they're not used to, they get confused. So highlighting those numbers everywhere that you go so that they recognize them no matter the font is going to be is going to be key, right? And then tip number 3. Take breaks even when you're practicing. So if you're going to have them on any type of online software, any online platforms, if you already put into your mind that okay, we're going to take a break, but we're going to hop back in and maybe do some workbooks take breaks okay especially with our younger children they need breaks so don't give them this long stint of time just to work on one thing we can do play-doh for five minutes if that's something that you like and then we can count for five minutes and then we're going to go back to the play-doh for another five minutes or whatever it is that's going to break it up a little bit right so for one of my uh, families that I'm that I'm serving, I say at the beginning of every lesson, play this video. After the video, move into the lesson, right? The actual part where they're actually going to be practicing. After that, give them a chance to maybe stand up, shake it out a little bit, and jump back into it. Okay. So we want we don't want math to be this frustrating, this thing that they don't like. Because when I talk to a lot of adults and I ask them about their least favorite subject, a lot of times it's math and they attach it to how they felt when they had to, when they had to complete a math assignment. So we're cutting down on making math this traumatic and this hard subject, right? We want them to be able to feel like they can be successful with it and taking breaks is going to help with that, okay? And then using objects, using objects to count is okay fingers using our fingers is not the only option right so bring back out those things when I, when I talked about using what you have right so bring those objects into it and it can be for anything right it can be for any operation I should say so if you're adding you can have a group of plates on this side and a group of bowls on that side bring it together what's your answer right what's the sum if you are subtracting take a group of forks i have 12 forks i gave away seven of them or my number sentence says 12 minus 7 bring in 12 socks and take away seven right use those objects not just their fingers because we only have 10 right so when we use our fingers for everything for everything we limit we limit the math that we can actually do when we only use our fingers okay if we are multiplying you can take different so let's say we're doing 
five times eight, right? I can have five groups and then maybe I drop eight jelly beans or eight Skittles or eight M&Ms in each group, eight dry beans in each group, right? Using those objects for math. If I'm dividing and I have 20 jelly beans and it's five people, let me divide out those jelly beans. And that can mean that you can actually have um, five pieces of paper and you draw a person on each page and you drop a jelly bean on each page. They need to be able to touch and to feel and to move math, okay? It can't just be flat on the page. That's not going to work. That's when their frustration and anxiety and all those things are going to start to build because it's just flat and it's just them against the, against the word problem, against the number sentence. But give them some objects and I guarantee you that it will be a world of a difference for them because they will realize that I don't just have to write out my answer. I can actually show it, okay? I can actually show it. That's what the object gives them the opportunities to do. And then the last tip. You want to count every single day. You want to count every day. And that can mean counting steps, right? How many steps did it take for you to get from your room to um, to your sibling's room or to my room? How many steps does it take for us to get from the front door to the mailbox? If you have steps, right? I've, I've talked about how my three-year-old learned how to count by going up and down the steps. Right, So I'm not asking you to add anything to the plate that you already have, okay? But I'm saying be intentional about practicing math, okay? So not things that we already have to do every day. We have to brush our teeth, right? Nope, right? You're brushing your teeth. How many times did you go side to side or up and down, okay? Count while you're brushing your teeth. Can you count to 50? I mean, it's going to sound muffled because you're brushing your teeth, but can you count while you're brushing your teeth, while you're picking out your clothes? If you're on YouTube, right? And now I'm talking to the kids. Y'all, y'all, y'all make sure they hit this part. If you're on YouTube, type counting to 100. And there are going to be so many videos, right? That will pop up. If you want to learn how to count by 10, Miss Fan has done a really great renegade where you can learn how to count by 10 while doing the renegade, right? So, hey, you can look that up. That's the way that you can count. But making sure that we are being intentional about it, okay? So, as the parents, right, we've been doing this, this COVID-19 season, we've been stepping into that role already as the educator. So, continue that during the summer. Take a break. As for me, as for me and my house, right, from today up until the 15th, we're going to have a break, right? We're going to have a break. We're closing down. Most of our e-learning, the educator and me won't, won't shut everything down. They're still going to have to work on their gifts and, and their talents and the things that they do well. But academically, we're going to, we're going to break and pause from the scheduling and the academic side of it. I suggest that you all do the same thing. However, when you hop back into it, make sure, make sure that you follow these tips, okay? So, take a break. I am Miss Spann, the educator, telling you to take a break from learning if your school year has ended. Take a break from it. Allow them to breathe. Allow them to regroup if they really love. So, I, I'm going to give you an example from my house because that's just the easiest thing to do. So, one of my eight-year-olds wants to be a fashion designer when she grows up. So, for these next two weeks, she has about 20 blank, um, plain white t-shirts. So, she's going to be designing on those, okay? My other, my eight-year-old really likes to, um, she, when she grows up, one of the things that she wants to do is draw, to be a graphic artist. She also wants to be a pilot, but... Practicing graphic artists for the next two weeks will, will be a little bit easier. So she has her her art kit out, she has her sketchbook out, and they're going and she's going to be practicing drawing. Okay. For my three-year-old, mm -hmm. she has mastered her name, y'all. So excited. In one week. So now we're going to start working on the letters in her name. Okay. And not and not a okay, it's 10 o'clock. Let's learn the letters in your name. But just literally, I put the letters on her door 
every now and again, we'll point to it, we'll talk about it. My one-year-old, he's, hey, he's here, right? So I'm gonna make some sensory boxes for him and things that just are light and fun for, for myself as a mom and as an educator and also for them, okay? So I'm suggesting that you do the same thing. What does your child like to do? What do they want to do when they grow up? What are some of the talents and the things that they haven't been able to practice because they've been really focused on their schoolwork? Take a couple of weeks to get a really good routine in with that. And then I do encourage hop back into reading every day, practicing some, some sort of academics every day because we already know their direct instruction with the teacher has been cut since about March 13th up until now. So now that we're in the summer, we still have a lot of gaps that we're going to have to fill. Okay. So quick run through. Tip number one, use what you have. Okay. Use what is already there with you. Tip number two, highlight numbers everywhere as you're driving, as you're in the store, as they're watching TV, watching YouTube, highlight, highlight those numbers so that they see them in the different fonts and they get real and they get really familiar with them. Tip number three, take some breaks. So after, so after this long extended break that we're going to take, right, for a couple of weeks just to regroup, once we hop back into learning, still make sure that they take five to ten minute breaks in between learning, okay, so that we decrease that anxiety. Tip number four, when you're practicing math, bring in objects. Children at this elementary stage, they, they are very tactile learners, right? They're kinesthetic. They have to move. They need to touch. So bring in those objects for them to practice their math. And then the last one, we want to make sure that we are counting every single day. Counting steps, count while we brush our teeth, laying down in bed. Let me count to 50. Maybe by the time I count to 50, I'll fall asleep, right? Just, just different things. Infusing it in what you already do. I'm a mama for, I'm not adding anything extra to anyone's plate. Just bring it into what you already do on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? So that's my five tips. Wrapping up our Math Mondays, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for all the comments. I'm hopeful that whatever you commented and asked for, I was able to deliver it to you. And also be reminded, if you want to continue practicing, and learning counting specifically throughout the summer. I do have a four week online course that is designed for kindergartners. It's called Kindergarten Counts. So check it out, enroll in that course if you would like to continue learning throughout the summer. I will see you guys on Fun Friday as we wrap up our live lessons before summer break or for the summer break, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will add the course link into the comments and also a way for you to subscribe to our emails in the comments as well. All right. You guys have an awesome, magnificent Monday and I'll see you guys on Friday.